welcome back to Scarlet Rage Vintage and beside me I am joined by a legend, Aww. a burlesque legend. <laughs> it's none other than Miss Betsy Rose. Hello. Let's introduce, this is Betsy's oh, dog Frida. This is Frida Rose. And <laughs> this is obviously Frank who has been trying to woo her for two years. Uh, it's gone nowhere. Let's let's start from the beginning yeah. on how you got involved in burlesque. Initially, the, the thing that drew me to it was its aesthetic and how it drew upon all of the wonderful vintage elements that I love in life okay. and my performance background. So I started off as a dancer yep. and I've been dancing my whole life and uh, it was when I was still training at dance college, yeah. at a dance and musical theatre college I went to, when I first got into burlesque, which was ten years ago, and I was able to have complete creative control yes. over whatever dance dancer I wanted to be or character I wanted to be, Okay. and pull in all of the um, original elements of burlesque, because okay. the burlesque style I do is very classic, it's very authentic, I'm inspired by the original dancers from the 40s, you know, yeah. Gypsy Rose Lee, Lily St. Cyr, Sally Rand. There are so many myths behind stripper, burlesque, you know, the differences. Yeah. A lot of non-vintage people that I, I know are literally like, well, what's the difference between burlesque and sure. what's the difference between stripping? Yeah, the two are so similar. Um, we are essentially um, derobing and stripping, if you like, but we're creating more of an art form out of it. Yes because we're performing with it. All of our inspirations and the women who paved this path for us yeah. were, you know, they must have been so incredibly amazing to have the um, courage to be able to do that back in those days because they were the, the original strippers. They, they yeah. were the, the people who started this whole movement when the first working men's club evolved in the 60s um, and it's taken us to today with the modern day stripper. We're doing the same thing but we've evolved it so much that it's become so much more socially acceptable and you'll see it in theatres yeah. and you'll see it in, you know, perhaps even on TV not like they're broadcasting a burlesque show but the yeah. idea of a burlesque dancer yeah. has become so much more mainstream and it's less underground and it's less taboo whereas a stripper is still taboo Both of them are an art form Exactly, yeah With you, with the costumes that you do, you do beautiful on period style costumes. Now, not, not necessarily they're vintage, you have them exactly. custom made. Yeah. Costume is a big thing for Absolutely, yeah, because I mean, it's a visual. I mean, all your money must go towards <laughs> costumes. A lot, of, a lot of it does. I draw um, inspiration on all of the um, authentic vintage pieces. I don't yes. wear them on stage because they're so delicate, but I work with a company called A5 Accessories. Yeah. Austin Stephanus. He is incredible. His attention to detail is unbelievable. He works with his team in between Singapore and Jakarta. They share their time. And um, it's just unbelievable what they've created. It's so on form, isn't it? Yeah. It looks so vintage. It must be so hard that you spend so much money on a costume and you are derobing. Yeah. And, you know, you're throwing it all over yes. the place. So <laughs> these things really have to withhold the test of time. They do. I want to talk about your act. It must take so much time and effort. It's all, it's funny because people think, oh gosh, how what a lovely old time you must have. Yeah. Dancing on stage, you know, for a short while every night, and then I must be a lady of leisure. Well, of course I make time for leisure. Yes, uh, but we I all have should. to. However, a lot of the time is just thinking of the next act yeah. and the next costume and yeah. all of the admin that's involved and yeah. the work that goes behind it all and the repairs and it's, it's very relentless. Creating an act um, is the, the fun side of things and the creative side, it can happen very quickly or mm -hmm. it can take you know a, the best part of a year. You just have to let the process happen organically in the end yeah. and, and let it run Don't its... rush it. Exactly, because... Um, you need to do things properly. Okay. If it's not perfect, it's not going on stage. But this is also something else that I want to touch upon is because you are derobing, you have to be in perfect shape. I, I mean, I think that's what um, makes burlesque so appealing though, the, the fact that there are so many different body shapes and sizes on yeah. stage and it's showcasing females in every form and that's a beautiful thing. Do you go, you go to the gym? I don't. 
I've never been to the gym in my life. What? I still dance quite a lot. Yes. And that well, helps obviously. hugely. I trained mainly in ballet when I was younger. Um, and I still try to take class every now and again. So I want to ask you your five points for someone wanting to come into burlesque. It's a very difficult one to break because it's such a niche market yes. and there's such good quality burlesque out there now, yeah. especially in London. Yes. Um, so it's quite difficult for um, newer artists to find an in. And it's very hard to be original when um, what we're doing is such a, a vintage art form. You're not going to be able to create, well, you might be able to, but it's, um, it's very difficult to create something new. So I think personality is key to um, create something which is refreshing to see because we haven't seen that person before. Would you say that there's a certain training that you could do that maybe help you along the way? There are lots of classes that go on. There are a lot of um, burlesque schools which are, which are brilliant. I've never taken a burlesque class in my life. Okay. Um, you don't necessarily need to. I think you just need to have confidence in yourself, whatever you are. The best way is just to apply any knowledge that you've had and just to do not be ignorant to these amazing experiences that you may have had, regardless if they're in theatre or okay. whatever your background is, because that's what's going to make you unique. That's also the beauty of it, because we've all come from different backgrounds. Yes. And you could see that when you're watching a show. If you were looking to go to a burlesque show, where would you suggest to go? In London, yeah. Obviously Gin House, because obviously uh, you produce this. Yeah. Set. So um, I'm involved 100% um, with all of the producing and performing and programming. I produce it with two other performers. Yes. Jolie Papillon and Missy Patal, two of my best friends. We run it bi-monthly in East London at a private member's bar called King's Head, which is exquisite, um, but we open it to the public. There are so many incredible shows in London, so, so many. One of the dearest shows to my heart is Proud Cabaret. I've been performing like there since day one. They have a, a few venues, Proud Cabaret City, Proud Cabaret Camden and one in Brighton and Café de Paris is one of my favourite venues. There's so much history in that venue. The Hippodrome Casino have a lot of amazing shows. Holly Ray runs a brilliant show uh, called Soho Bales Club yes. every Saturday night. That's a later one. Black Cat Cabaret, they're a really great show. Okay. For me, they're one of my favourites um, because they draw on a lot of different inspirations but they're quite uh, vintage inspired because okay. it's, it's harder to find that these days. But I wanted to stop there and thank you so much for joining me. Everything uh, that Betsy does, her upcoming shows, we will link in below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you. Bye! Thank you!